Okay, today we're going to be talking about applications of, of uniform circular motion. Um, on an unbanked curve, the static frictional force provides the centripetal force needed for the car to stay on the road. Now you may think it would be kinetic friction, but to be kinetic friction, it actually has to be sliding. So the tire would have to be sliding against the road. Since it's not sliding, it's called static friction because they're not sliding against each other. All right, so the only really thing that's holding on the road from sliding out and wanting to go off on a tangent, like wanting to continue off in a straight line, is the idea of static friction pushing it towards the center of the circle. So we know that all the forces have to equal to uh, mass times centripetal acceleration, and the only force in this case really is static friction. So we end up with the force of friction is equal to mv squared over r. And in the y direction, the normal force, which would be coming straight out of the car, must be equal to weight, which is acting into the road. Okay. Okay, but how about if the road itself is banked? Uh, in other words, you know, like in um, professional race car tracks, they have the, the roads are banked, or maybe going on the exit ramp on a major highway, sometimes the roads are banked. And in this case, it's not just friction that's holding the car in the, into the center of the circle. As a matter of fact, we can assume there's no friction. And what actually is holding the car into the center of the circle in that case? Um, and that would simply be, if you take the normal force, which is coming straight out, it would be the x component would be acting towards the center of the circle. The y component of the normal force would be equal to the weight. So it's just this x component of the normal force. In other words, the road itself is pushing it towards the center of the circle. All right, let's look at it a little closer at this. Like, let's look at some of the forces in the y. Um, in the y, assuming up is positive and to the left is positive, then you would have the y component of the normal force acting up and the weight acting down, and the two would be equal to zero. In other words, the normal force cosine of the angle would be equal to mg. In the x, the centripetal force is being provided by this normal force, and that's equal to mass times acceleration. So the centripetal force is the normal force in the x. And you can see that the centripetal acceleration can be replaced by v squared over r. So what can we do with this? If we look at it a little closer, here's our x equation we came up with. Here's our y equation we came up with. And if we divide the two, we can obtain this equation. Now how do we get that? Well, if you divide this by this, the force normal cancels out, sine of theta, over cosine of theta is tangent, the two masses cancel out, and you're left with V squared over RG. So in other words, we can actually determine what angle a row would have to be at for a specific speed at a given radius. And this is relying on just the bank of the curve to keep it into the circle. In other words, there's no friction involved at all. All right, let's look at an example of this. Um, Daytona International Speedway has a maximum radius of 316 meters and uh, a steeply banked curve at 31 degrees. And it's suppose that there was no friction whatsoever. Could the car still make it around the turn without flying off on a tangent? Or what speed would, could it make it at? All right, so we derived this equation already. Um, quick note is like on the AP um, formula cards, there won't be formulas like this. You really have to actually look at a problem like this from um, the original equations we were looking at, like some of the force in the X, some of the force in the Y. So anyhow, if we solve this equation for V, we can plug in the numbers and get the answers. Now. What is this actually saying? This is saying that you can actually go 96 miles per hour around this turn and not fly off on a tangent. Okay? 
And that's just relying on the bank of the curve itself pushing towards the center of the circle. All right, let's look at vertical circular motion. We've got a motorcycle that's coming up and into a loop. It goes all the way around the loop. Okay? And what we've done is we've drawn a free body diagram at four locations. One on the bottom, one on the top, and the two sides, as shown right here. Now let's take a moment and look at this. On the very bottom, the track itself is pushing the motorcycles up while the weight is pulling him down. On this side here, weight is still pulling down, but now the track is pushing it towards the center. On the top, weight is still pulling down, and the track is pushing it down towards the center. And at the fourth location, it's once again weight pushing down, and the normal force is pushing to the center. In other words, let's look at this a little bit more general. Which way is weight always acting? Well, you can see weight is always acting straight down, regardless of the position. And you would expect it to be anything different. It doesn't matter where you are around the circle. Your weight would always be pushing down towards the center of the Earth. And what is the track always going to be doing? It's always going to be pushing the rider towards the center of the circle. All right, so what I would like to do is, what are the forces acting on the rider to cause this centripetal acceleration at these four locations? Well, we know that centripetal force is equal to the sum of whatever forces are acting on it. And that causes the centripetal acceleration to hold it in a circle. So let's look at the first location. If we count towards the center of the circle as being positive in all cases, then we have normal force at 1 pushing up, and the weight acting down is equal to mass times velocity squared over r. In other words, the sum of the forces or equal to mass times acceleration. In the second location, the only force really pushing into the center of the circle is the track wall itself. The weight it doesn't help at all because it's actually at a 90 degree angle to it. It's perpendicular. And the top, now both the weight and the um, normal force are pushing it down to the center of the circle to cause that same centripetal acceleration. Now this is kind of an interesting idea if you think about this. Could you actually design a ride so this motorcycle would come up to the very tippy top and be able to make it around even if the tr track was missing here? In other words, could he come around the circle, make it through the circle, even if the track was missing? And you actually can. Because what would happen is this normal force would be zero. And then you would only be relying on the mass of the object to pull it through the circle. Okay, so wouldn't that be a really cool ride to actually have the top of the, the ride missing and yet you still fall around the track? And once again, the location at point 4 or the um, equation at point 4 is the same as at point 2. Um, we'll talk a lot more about problems like this once we um, learn more about kinetic and potential energies. And then we're going to be able to actually like analyze like roller coaster rides like this. But this is the idea of analyzing roller coaster rides.